I have flown. I have sailed. I have moved about this world of ours. And ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. A creaking door. The manufacturers of State Express, the Fox Filter King cigarettes, Take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. Good evening, friends of the Creaking Door. The creaking door is open. So do come in. Do you subscribe to the view that some of us have power over the life and death of someone else? John does. He knows when people are going to die. And that can be most upsetting for all concerned. <laughs> News in world class. Get the taste of new smooth Express 3.5 today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders and the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3 5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3 5 today. John is not a usual sort of man, although he has a very ordinary sort of name. John Smith. What could be more ordinary than that? But he is a most unusual man, really. Take his blood group, for instance. His blood group is group A, B. Very rare indeed, as the doctor is pointing out to him. Only 2% of people belong to group A, B, Mr. Smith. I know my group is very rare. And this young girl is dying. She must have a transfusion as soon as possible, otherwise she will die. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But surely I'm not the only person with this type of blood in the area? Oh, no doubt there are other people, but we don't know everyone's blood group offhand, just like that. We depend, as you know, on blood donors. You're the only registered donor in this area. But, but there must be someone else. Oh, believe me, Mr. Smith, there isn't. Anyway, giving a transfusion isn't anything to worry about. There's nothing to it. I've given blood before. I know that. Then you'll help us? You'll help the younger? I, I can't. I, I can't go through that again. I won't. You've no right to ask him. Please, Mr. Smith, calm down. My marking isn't so terrible. Yes, it is. But you said you're... You don't know what you're asking. I can't do it. Mr. Smith, unless young Beryl Rogers receives a transfusion of blood, type NB blood, she will most certainly die. But there must be somebody else who can do it. Why pick on me? I told you why, Mr. Smith. You're the only registered donor in the area. Well, then what about outside the area? What about blood banks? You keep supplies of blood under refrigeration these days, don't you? Our own local supplies of AB blood from the blood bank are exhausted. To find supplies elsewhere and fly them here would take too long. The girl would die. Oh, hang it, old man. All I'm asking you to do is give a pint of your blood. That's all. Not your life. No. 
That's not what you're asking. And you don't know what you're asking. I can't do it. I can't. Very well. And then there's nothing more I can do. Well, I can't force you, I'm afraid. There is, unfortunately, no law which says that one must give blood. But I hope, Mr. Smith, that you'll be able to live with your conscience after tonight. After this young girl dies because you won't help. And I hope you can face yourself in the mirror each day. It wouldn't be saving her. Don't you understand? It wouldn't. It would be only postponing something which might as well be ended now. This girl's life has already ended. Unless you can find someone else to help. You're the only one, Mr. Smith. I've told you before. You're the only one. Her only chance. Then if I'm her only chance, she hasn't got one. You refuse to help? Yes. Mr. Smith, this is a free country. You have every right to say that. You must have a very good reason for letting a young girl go to an untimely death like this. I have. Won't you tell me what it is? You wouldn't believe me. Nobody believes me. I promise. I, I listen with an open mind. You see, the girl's father is waiting outside to hear your decision. I'll have to tell him something. All right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's been making my life a nightmare for the last three years. I first registered as a blood donor about three and a half years ago. As you said, my group is the rarest. There aren't many donors. But also, there aren't so many people needing transfusions. So it was about five months before I was called on to help. He was a young man. Jerick Evans. I still remember his name. He'd been badly cut up in a motor accident. They phoned me from this hospital at about two in the morning. I came along here and gave two pints of blood. It, it saved young Derek's life. At least that's what we all thought. But it didn't save his life, really. It only saved him a far more horrible death. Two or three days after I'd given the blood, I... I came along to the hospital to see how he was getting on. By this time, he was sitting up in bed, looking quite well again. I was interested to see the man whose life had been saved by my blood, I suppose. But also, I... I felt I had to see him. You see, Doctor, my blood was flowing in his veins. Already, I felt a strange sort of kinship with him. I sat on the chair beside his bed. I smiled at him. Now, how are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine. It's uh, funny to think about it, isn't it? Well, what? Uh, well, that, that your blood is now flowing around my body, uh, through my brain, and making me think and breathe. Yes. Yes, it, it is. Although I must confess, I, I don't feel any... into my mind's eye that flashed a picture that had been frighteningly real. It wasn't as if I'd imagined myself somewhere else or anything like that. I'd been completely aware that I was sitting in the hospital ward. But in the front of my consciousness, it flashed a picture of young Derek Evans and a girl walking beside him. He'd suddenly stepped into a quicksand, and, and as I watched, horrified, I'd seen him suck down into the grass. I didn't tell him what I'd imagined. 
it's not the sort of thing you tell a convalescent patient. But as soon as I could, I made my excuses and left. I tried to put the remembrance of it to my mind, but that night I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I made a phone call to Derek's parents. Hello? Mrs. Evans? Speaking. Who is this? My name isn't important. I wonder if you can tell me, has your son Derek got a girlfriend? My son is engaged to be married. Who is it? Please, this is very important. Could you tell me what his fiancée's name is? Really, I... Please, it's, it's very important. Well, I, I don't know what business it can possibly be of yours, but her name is Jill. I'd somehow known somewhere in the dark recesses of my mind that that was the name she was going to say. Jill. The name which I'd heard Derek call out in my... my vision. I was coming. For a long time, I... I walked about like a man in the days. Was it possible that the fact that my blood was flowing in his veins had somehow given me the ability to see into Derek's future? It seemed too unbelievable to contemplate. Finally, I, I decided to return to the hospital and tell him the whole story. It might well be nothing but nonsense... But at least he should be warned, I thought. I phoned to check when I'd be allowed to see him. What name was that again? E Evans. Derek Evans. E he was in a motor accident. Oh, uh, that, Mr. Evans. I'm afraid it will be no use coming to see him, sir. Why not? He was discharged from hospital two days ago. <laughs> But his mother told me that he'd gone away for a week or so into the country to convalesce. She must have been a little suspicious of me making off phone calls by this time, because she refused to tell me where I could get in touch with him. But looking back, it wouldn't have been any good anywhere. At the time, I told myself that I was behaving hysterically over nothing and tried to put the whole thing from my mind. It succeeded, too, up to a point, until a couple of days later... I bought the evening paper as usual. And there it was, staring me in the face. A young man, Derek Evans, was drowned there in the quicksand, not far from the village of Medside. His fiancée, his Jill Worthing, was with him. Escaped him. So now you see, Doctor, why I'm not going to give this young girl any of my blood. My blood is evil. It brings about death in the most horrible fashion. And worse than that, I know about it in advance. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. into his future by giving him some of his blood for the good old-fashioned way. <laughs> so 
then you're quite out of it. Oh, for heaven's sake, why can't you leave me alone? You don't seem to understand what you're asking. I told you it's happened four times in the past, and each time I've lived under a terrible shadow of doom and until the person concerned has died. But look, if you believe what you say to be true, then one can take precautions. Take Derek Evans, for instance. He could have been prevented from going away into the country. The tragedy could have been avoided. I said that with Rose Warwick. But at least in her case, I was sure that my vision couldn't possibly come true. What happened? Rose was a cripple. I gave her blood, saved her life. Then I saw her quite clearly in my mind's eye. She was screaming for help, and there was ice all around her and ice skating. The more I thought about it, the more impossible it was. She couldn't even walk, let alone skate. At last, I thought this sequence was going to be broken. I should be free. And what happened? She was in a crowded cinema when it caught fire. She died, burnt to death. And the film that was showing was called Winter Wonderland. All about ice skating. Well, well, what? Are you going to save my daughter's life or are you going to let her die? I can't do it, Mr. Rogers. Maybe your daughter Bella will live without my assistance. That's quite impossible. And we only have about 15 minutes left at the outside. I can't do it. You're, you're a monster. That's what you are. A monster. Now, listen to me, Mr. Smith. I promise you one thing. If you don't help my little girl and she dies, I'll kill you. All right. All right. What's the use? You don't want to understand either of you. I'll do it. Good. But I'm warning you. I won't be saving your daughter's life, Mr. Rogers. I'll just be keeping her alive so that she can die in a much more horrible fashion. How's the respiration? Normal, Doctor. Some donor? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Uh, she's already getting some color in her cheeks. Uh, all right, nurse, remove the needle. Very well, Doctor. Mr. Smith, I can't thank you enough. 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 man was standing with his back to me. I, I, I couldn't see his face, but where is it? It, it, it was terrible. Oh, what? What did you see? This man had his hands round her throat. And he was strangling her. I haven't saved this poor girl, Doctor. She's going to be murdered. It, isn't it? Your blood being pumped about inside me. It must be nice blood because I'm feeling much better. I'm glad. How old are you, Belle? Sixteen. Nearly seventeen. When are you leaving hospital? About a week, the doctor said. You... You will be careful, won't you? You're such a pretty girl. Careful? Oh, what, what do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. Just be careful. I pray this doesn't come true this time. <laughs> Tell me what you've been doing with yourself the last four months. 
You were very nice to me while I was in hospital. Oh, nonsense, it's just... You told me that if ever I was in trouble, if ever I needed any help... Oh, Walter, there's nothing wrong, is there? Well, you met my father, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. How is he? he he's dead. He died last month. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to do. That's why I came to you. You see, I'm not quite 17 yet. Unless I have a respectable place to stay... Well, they're going to put me in a home. That would be awful. That's why I came to you. You said if ever I... I got a job, I could pay for my keep. It wouldn't cost you anything. I haven't got any relatives or friends. My mother's been dead for years. I've tried to work out what I should do. And you're the only person I could think of. Please, won't you help me? No, 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 no. No, don't cry. Of course I'll help you. I've been thinking about you quite a lot these last three or four months. I keep an eye on you. Maybe this time I, I can make sure that that vision didn't come true. She moved in. I had a big house and there was plenty of room. I've never married, never had a family. And it was wonderful at first. Just having someone to care about and... Someone who cared about me. There, there was nothing else in it but that. I know what people have been saying, but that was nonsense. She was like a daughter to me, the daughter I'd never had. And she brought my help. From the start, I, I didn't trust him. He, he was too cocky, too confident. But he was evil. Uncle John? This is Mike. No, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. How do you do? We're going out for a drive. Uh, yes, of course. Well, don't be too late back, will you? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Smith. I'll bring you back safe and sound. I must have seized her by 
her throat. I don't remember any more until she was lying at my feet. She was dead. My vision had come true again. She'd been murdered just as I'd seen. And now I knew why the figure whose back I'd seen had been vaguely familiar. It had been me who I'd seen commit murder. All right, Sergeant. Take him away. I only hope the judge believes your story, Smith. Because I don't. He has a few blood brothers, in fact. <laughs> after years of constant research by our master blenders and the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3-5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3-5 today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door? Of course. <laughs> Manufacturers of State Express 3-5 Filter King cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present 